Hey guys, we're out in southwest Montana today calling coyotes. It's early spring, it's a beautiful day, and uh, you know, we've had exceptional success this year calling coyotes in with uh, coyote vocalizations, and I wanted to take just a couple of minutes to share with you some of the things that we're doing to have success with coyote vocalizations. Let's take just a couple of minutes and talk about howlers. Um, as you guys know, there's a lot of these on the market. They come in every size, shape, and color. Um, you know, there's really nothing magical about any particular one, uh, but certainly some have higher sound quality than others. The bottom line for me is I try to find the ones that are easy for me to use and the ones that, that I can produce the desired sounds with. So, you know, you might have to try some different howlers to find the one that fits your mouth and that works best for you. You know, some of my favorites that I, I rely on, um, the Dan Thompson Howler is a good one. Um, Reese Outdoors makes some, some great product and some great howlers. Um, Crack Calls is another one that I use. The Bill Austin Howler is a good one. And of course, uh, the old tried and true critter call is hard to beat. So, you know, there's a, a variety of these. One thing that I try to do when I'm doing coyote vocalizations is I will typically use two or three different ones to get different sounds and sound like you know possibly more than one coyote in the area. So um, I'm gonna maybe just demonstrate for you how, how this might sound. You know there's a lot of different sounds that coyotes make. It's really important that you learn their language and you learn what you're saying to them and what they're saying to you. Um, as a rule of thumb try to be non-intimidating. Try to sound friendly, lonesome, um, there are situations where you want to be aggressive, but it's the exception to the rule. Um, so, so here are some of the sounds that I use in the field very commonly, and I'll do it on a couple of different howlers so you can hear the difference. Um, this is a standard interrogation howl. So an interrogation howl is a coyote saying, hey, how's it going? You know, he's looking for companionship. This is a great sound to use to start your stand. It's also a great sound to use if you're out scouting for coyotes and trying to locate them. Um, and the interrogation howl sounds something like this. Just kind of a, hello, how are you doing? Um, I'm kind of doing that middle to the top half of the reed, so it sounds like a younger, you know, non-intimidating non coyote. Um, commonly what I'll do, like I mentioned, is I'll use a couple of different howlers. So I might use a, a younger or a female or interrogation howl and then switch to something that sounds like a little older coyote. You can use a variety of calls and a variety of sounds to create different scenarios and different situations for those coyotes. So the interrogation howl is a really important one. Um, another sound that I believe is crucial is a, a coyote distress or a pup distress. Commonly used after a shot is fired. This is also a great sound to use when the coyotes are territorial, when they're breeding, when they have pups. Um, a lot of times this will set off their protective instinct and, and bring them running in. So. Um, a pup distress or a coyote distress might sound something like this. And of course you can do it with any one of these howlers. You know, if you're looking for volume, if it's windy, you know, you can use a bell. Something like that. So that's a pup distress. In my opinion, the interrogation howl and the coyote distress are the two key sounds to learn. There's a lot of other vocalizations. The female invitation howl is a great one to use during breeding season. Of course, there's challenge howls and aggressive barks and, and you know breeding whimpers. And those are great things to add to your, um, to your bag of tricks as you go along. But the interrogation howl and the, and the coyote distress are the key ones to start with. One other thing I want to talk about just a little bit is uh, when I howl, I actually put my teeth on the reed. So when I'm doing a distress call, I actually wrap my teeth with my lips like this and I, I put lips on the call for distress type sounds. When I'm howling, I use either one tooth or my two front teeth because it gives me the ability to slide back on the reed and make those sounds. Um, you know, as I mentioned before, there's a variety of calls available. One thing that's great, I, I'm a big fan of the open reed calls, one thing that's great about these is you can do just about everything on a single call. You can take a call like the critter call and you can do howls. You can do 
do high pitch howls. You can do pup distress. And then of course you can do your normal distress sounds. Again, a lot of great calls on the market. Nothing necessarily magical about any one of them. Um, find the one that, that fits you best and works best for you and then really learn it. Learn those sounds and I promise you if you'll get out there in the field and you'll use coyote vocalizations it will improve your success.